And first of all, let's just start with the story of the Carney kid because you start off with object poverty, heroin addicts for parents, went on the road as a Carney thief. People don't want to hear me talk about it. You tell me about it. Well, there's a lot to talk about. There is. I was raised on a traveling carnival. Both of my parents were small-time carnival thieves, and they taught me to be an apprentice thief. And I was taught how to rig the games, how to scam the marks, how to shortchange people. And basically, by the time I was 12, I knew 50 different ways to steal a dollar. And this is what our family did to support themselves. And of course, when you're raised into this background, there are no moral questions or whether it's right or wrong. Kids don't think about that. Your parents give you positive reinforcement by the, how much money you steal. The more you steal, the more they like you. So the issue of ethics never shows up. And so you just want to be as good a thief as you can be to get approval from your parents. And so that's basically what I did. And I learned everything. And I never thought it was weird because, you know, if it's the only reality that you know, you have it's nothing not to compare it to, and your life is whatever it is. And my life was going from one small town to another, from one county fair to another, tearing down, traveling all night, setting up, get the games all set up, everything rigged so that we can start scamming as soon as people walk onto the lot. I think everybody wants to know what's the most crooked game in the carnival because you go there basically to lose money with the it's understood you're going to and come home with a big stuffed toy that's going to go in your closet but what's what's the worst game at the carnival well they have several levels of sophistication in terms of games there's your simple games which they call the hanky panks which are the ones that you're used to seeing where you throw balls or darts at balloons the simple stuff or try to throw a, a coin in a dish. These are the simple things and there are only small adjustments needed to make it possible for the person to never win. But there are games that are much more sophisticated. They're called alibis. Alibis are games that have a physical prop, a physical gaff. They call it a G. And the person who is the carny can manipulate the, the game in such a way that he can physically make it possible for the person to win or lose. You have total control over the game. Once you have control over the game, you can show the person how easy it is to win and let them have a practice shot and go, oh yeah, that works fine. And then when it comes down time for the money shot, you activate the device, the gaff goes off, and you can't win. These are very, very interesting. And of course they call it an alibi because you always have to figure out some reason to tell the mark why he lost. And so you go through all of this patter and you get the mark to realize, oh, you can't win every time, and you, you are just a little bit off, and your luck's about to change, and one good one makes up for all the bad ones. There's a whole litany of stuff that they teach you to say to people to make them feel better about losing. But then there are games that are even more sophisticated than that. These are called flat stores. Flat stores are a game in which you can go to a carnival lot and lose thousands of dollars. People think this is impossible. They think you can go to a carnival and lose a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there, $25, $50 maybe, but not thousands. But there are scams. My dad was one of the best flatties of all time. And you get people involved in this game where they think they're going to win incredible prizes. I'm talking about really, really nice stuff. You may see stuffed dogs, stuffed poodles, stuffed bears in other games but in the flat stores you're talking about shotguns and you're talking about TVs and you're talking about portable electronics you're talking about high-end stuff and you look and you can see there's thousands of dollars worth of stuff that you can win for a dollar well obviously all they gotta do is get the hook in your nose and they make it seem incredibly easy they let you get to within 90% of where you need to get to win all your prizes and they keep adding new prizes to make it more attractive and every time they add new prizes it costs more to play and it goes from a dollar to five dollars to ten to twenty and eventually I've seen people playing for five hundred dollars a throw. Wow. You think it can't happen until you see it in person until you see how it works until you can see the psychological hook that the carney can put into the mark and pull him in and very, very slowly, very methodically work him into a point where he is spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And he gets so trapped that, as in Vegas, all people want to do is get even. At a certain point, all they really want to do is get even. Right. But in a carnival, you're gonna, your chances of getting even are about the same as in Vegas. It ain't going to happen.